Okay. I'll be uh, number one here. This state trooper gets the call to be on the lookout for a gray Ford swerving through all lanes on I-40 in Canadian County. You see other cars on the chase. About 10 minutes into the recording, you see the car in question, driven by Andrew Sawyers from Florida. There is noticeable damage to the bumper. Then the driver decides to exit right here on Cimarron Road, going 100 miles an hour. He lost it. Here's Sky 5 video showing the car crashed into the trees. That's when all law enforcement personnel with guns drawn rushes to the scene and arrests the driver. Anybody got eyes on him? You got him. Got you. Got the dog. The driver not only has a dog in the car. The rifle underneath the car. Sawyers was taken to the hospital and charged with eluding police and illegal gun possession. 41, looks like he's getting up at the 524. I see he's in the far right hand lane. Hey, you want to use the line? Yeah, 10 4, I'm in the first corner. He's getting up at 524, he's swinging around. First at five, a dramatic arrest in East Oahu. A police pursuit of an alleged auto thief turns a highway into a parking lot. It was a rough start to the weekend for drivers trying to get out of Hawaii Kai. The gridlock started this morning, leaving hundreds of drivers frustrated. HPD officers followed a juvenile allegedly driving a stolen truck, Honolulu bound on Kalani Anaole Highway. They finally caught up with him near Kalani High School. This video shows an officer with his weapon drawn, yelling at him to get out of the vehicle. We're told the suspect got stuck in construction traffic and may have hit a couple of cars while trying to escape. HPD blocked the center lanes just before 11 this morning while police investigated. The closure quickly caused traffic to back up for miles all the way to Coco Marina Center. Some fed up drivers who decided to go around through Waimanalo instead also found themselves in a traffic jam. Coming back around to whoever that is at the entrance. The chase took place just after 10 o'clock Tuesday night on January 5th. Oklahoma County deputies were trying to pull over a driver in a light-colored truck for speeding. Instead, the driver, identified as 28-year-old Brian Everhart, led deputies on a chase that started near I-40 and Council Road, went down the Kilpatrick Turnpike, and finally came to an end on I-44 near Northwest 36th Street. Could have caused a lot of damage, could have hurt a lot of people driving down the highway the way that they were driving, the way that this suspect was driving. At times, the pursuit reached speeds of more than 100 miles per hour. Deputies say Everhart ran through several stoplights and even had a flat tire, but that did not stop him. At one point, Everhart even hit a deputy's car, and it looks like deputies have him, but he keeps on going. With Everhart driving the wrong way down I-44, right into oncoming traffic. Sparks start flying from both the rim and the truck tailgate dragging the ground. The truck finally comes to a stop after a deputy performed another tactical maneuver and another deputy hit him head on, in effect pinning him in. But Everhart still refuses to give up. He guns his engine and even kicks at deputies who try to detain him. And all it takes three deputies to finally hold him down and cuff him. So their main concern right then and there is to get this man in custody, in compliance, get him to stop fighting. So Inside, deputies find a gun and holster in the door, as well as a bag of methamphetamine. And all three deputy vehicles were damaged in this chase, but nobody was hurt. Rocky Stewart has lived on Rushing Lane in a meet all his life. This was my great-grandfather's place, this whole place. I'm the sixth generation on here. Stewart says when his aunt died last year, some distant relatives moved into this trailer. 
five adults and four children. But there was one person Stewart says he never knew about, a 22-year-old autistic woman. It blows my mind because in a year's time, I never saw the girl. Never. A tip led investigators here last week, where they found a malnourished woman covered in insect bites wandering around the backyard. The sheriff says she was being forced to live in a makeshift shelter, much like a dog kennel, which was a blue tarp draped over a cage. Investigators say she was often locked in the cage at night to keep her from wandering. If I'd have known something, yeah, I would have stepped in myself and talk to them or find out what was going on, but I had no idea and they never struck me as that type of people. The sheriff says along with her belongings, there was a five gallon bucket for her to use the restroom inside the enclosure. Investigators say the suspects were planning to take the woman to a specific location to prostitute her to multiple men for money. That's a terrible thing for anybody to do to anybody right. and if it was done Somebody's got to pay. The five are charged with human trafficking and cruelty, but could face more charges. As for the woman, she was evaluated at an area hospital and placed in the care of the state. Tonight, we are getting a closer look at a police chase through the streets of Grand Rapids, ending near John Ball Zoo. It not only includes dash cams, but also body cameras on the police officers recording every second of the tense situation. WCZM 13's Phil Dawson is in the Information Center now with more. Well, 35-year-old Theodore Little was wanted for shooting his girlfriend, sexually assaulting two employees at a Kentwood business, and then stealing one of their cars to get away. Grand Rapids officers spotted the stolen vehicle downtown near the Bob, and from multiple cameras and angles, this is what happened next. Put the phone down! Almost stopped him. He got my. He he broke my uh, my tie rod or something. My tire. My left tire has turned left. I pulled ahead of him because I knew he was going to take off when cars cleared. So I gunned it and bounced right off me. Nice try. Yeah, you know. Continuing to follow breaking news this morning. Half a dozen people are in custody after a high-speed chase that crossed county lines and ended up right here in Nashville. Matthew Torres is following the latest for us. Matthew, it all started as an attempted burglary. Amy, Lebanon police stopped several people trying to break into the Lebanon gun shop on the Hartman Drive. However, the suspects ran away and drove off, starting this chase, which again started in Lebanon and ended right here in North Nashville. But I just want to give a quick update. Lebanon police now confirming to me they have detained two other people within the last hour. So a total of eight people are now in custody, but they believe six were involved in the attempted burglary and chase. Obviously, the investigation is still ongoing and being sorted out as one of the suspects is still in the hospital after he was bit by a canine. Police say the car he was traveling in was stolen and stopped at the alley on Formosa Street. Four others were with him and they ran into a nearby house where eventually police caught them. It was just an officer doing doing their job. They're they're yeah, out. Yeah, they were out uh, doing their job checking on businesses, checking the neighborhood, and they just happened to spot a couple suspicious looking individuals. There was a robbery call made around at the same time. The so-called victim turned out to be one of the people now in custody believed to be involved in the incident. Investigators are working on reviewing the surveillance video and we are working to get a copy of that as well. Reporting live in Nashville, Matthew Torres. <laughs>
Yeah, thank you, 33 Alpha. Uh, permissions for Empaz then. Uh, Empaz 14, vehicles to AA11, uh, crossing lane 1 and lane 2, swerving to prevent the vehicle behind from overtaking. Um, it's just prior to the uh, north end sort of roundabout junction on the A11. Just eight. The vehicle just tried to uh, mount the pavement towards the officer. Um, I think it was ripped over by the front near side wheel. Um, it's not had any effect. The vehicle's a matter of driving, it's still dangerous, very dangerous. Yeah, all well, so uh, we have got it on screen. Got him off uh, the slip road. Yeah, Pass 1 4 vehicles uh, rammed the police car, still on the A11, rammed the police car. Obviously. Vehicle now manoeuvring. Just going to come back onto the A11. If anyone's in the A11, stop the traffic. That uh, unit is uh, running down the A11 now. If you can try and slow the traffic down in case he rejoins. Just yes, sir. Yeah, we are recording as well, v uh, VL, VK Fuel Info. Now taking down the road sign. Sir, we've got a strategy for doing a hard stop on um, such a big vehicle. Yeah, it's still got an officer. You need to get yourself out of sight. If he sees you, he'll go for you. He already has done once before. Vehicle now being rammed, being pushed back. Watch it. He's now gone round it. Obviously, the uh, vehicle is uh, on the move, on the move. It's rammed the police vehicle out of the way. He's still stationary, hasn't moved yet. Well, it happened here at the intersection of 9th and Washington. Police say the, the, the suspect failed to turn on his traffic signal, and, he, and when the uh, police attempted to pull him over, that's when he fled and went east on Washington. If you move, I will shoot you! You understand me? What you're looking at are tense moments following a wild chase. Police say 23-year-old Craig Earls led officers on early Sunday morning. Here you can see him zoom through multiple stop signs. If you look, you can see the Jeep veers off to the right, but there's no one in it. He's already running across the field to the left. Running northbound. He runs until he falls into a ditch. He's headed north, but he just fell. Officers now stand with guns drawn as they apprehend him. No, no, no. Not just run from the police, huh? I'm sorry. Meanwhile, Earl's Jeep somehow came to a stop on its own. Police found methamphetamine and morphine in the vehicle. I tell you what, go ahead and sit down. He was taken into custody. That way you can get all the way up to the back. Now, police did have paramedics take a look at Earl's after he fell into the ditch. Fortunately, no one else was injured in this pursuit. Reporting live in Chickasha, Crystal Price, KOCO 5 News.
car that was being chased hit a motorcycle up here and then crashed into the median right over here. And that's when the car became disabled. Inside, a woman who was placed under arrest at the scene. Shortly after 10 this morning, police say they tried to get the woman to pull over on Bannister Road near Grandview Road. Investigators also say the car is believed to be tied to a robbery and kidnapping. Officers hit their lights and sirens to try to get the driver to stop driver refused to stop for them. Pursuit was initiated. During the course of the pursuit, they were coming southbound on uh, 71 Highway or I-49. Um, she abruptly made a right-hand lane change to exit at, at Redbridge, at which time she collided with a southbound motorcyclist. Now, the injured man was in serious condition when he was taken from the scene. The woman taken into custody without incident. We're live along 71 at Redbridge. Peggy Bright, KMBC 9 News. A woman's dead after getting caught in the middle of a car chase between police and a crime suspect. Happened just before 1 in the afternoon on Linden Boulevard near 225th Street in Cambria Heights. That's going to say 51-year-old Derek Perkins ran a red light and collided with a 78-year-old woman driving a Saturn. The victim was pronounced dead at the scene. Police were chasing Perkins because he and his car matched the description of a nearby larceny. When officers tried to pull him over earlier, they say Perkins tried to ram his car into the police cruiser before driving off and later crashing into the Saturn. Witnesses describe the scene. Ran the red light, smacked the green car. It was an innocent woman. It was horrible. It sounded like a big explosion. Boom! After the crash, Perkins ran off on foot before he was apprehended and taken into custody. Police say he has 10 prior arrests and is already serving lifetime parole for murder. We'll If you saw the, the accident, you would wonder how in the world they survived out of that. Mark Chavez was working at home in Carnwell when he heard the crash. About maybe four or five minutes later, I heard another crash. And I said, hmm, that's, that's not right. Two cars had lost control, got off the freeway, through this fence, and dropped into that 12-foot creek. Everybody was pretty shaken up. But one woman was especially upset. It's a woman's dog. He's breathing and moving around and looking around. Just seeing the look on that lady's face, that dog was her life. She made it out safe, but her dog was still trapped under her car. It was either get the dog out right away or he's probably going to drown. He's pretty scared. So three deputies, a sergeant and a bystander hopped into the creek. These guys are digging feverishly, digging feverishly, trying to figure out how to get in there. Watch as they shake the car, trying to get the dog out from underneath. She wanted her dog. Like her dog meant that much to her. She didn't care about her injury. She just wanted her dog. The tight space made it even harder for them to move the car just enough to rescue the dog. They really went out of their way, got down in there, got dirty, all full of mud. It was raining. Fifteen minutes later, they managed to tilt the car just enough for the dog to shimmy out. Awesome, awesome. If it was my family, my dog, I would expect someone to help me out and do the same thing. So, I mean, at the end of the day, we're all family, so we try to help each other out. Right now. And here's the scene. This is a wild and dangerous pursuit. It's actually the end of it. The driver of a U-Haul truck, we don't know if that truck was stolen or not, but the driver of that U-Haul rammed into a CHP patrol car and then just took off and the CHP was chasing that man. The chase ended near Topanga Canyon Boulevard and Old Topanga Canyon Road. Some canyon roads in the area have been closed due to the search. KCAL 9's Amy Johnson is uh, live on the ground for us with the ongoing manhunt. Amy?
One, there is still a very active scene here. You can see these uh, CHP cruisers are still here. And over in the distance, if Dolores can pan over, you can actually see the cruiser that uh, was rammed by that vehicle that they have been chasing. Now, it was just uh, about a couple miles up to Penga Canyon where this uh, suspect was supposed to stop because of a construction area that was going on. That's where that CHP cruiser was, and that suspect did not stop and, in fact, rammed into that cruiser and kept on going. Uh, officers have been in search of this suspect, and I would like to introduce uh, Leland Tang with the CHP. He's joining us now live. Um, what can you tell us? So at a, a little bit after 10 o'clock this morning, we had a, a Caltrans closure here on the uh, Topanga Canyon Boulevard. Um, and uh, this particular vehicle, we believe it, uh, it's going to be a panel van, white in color, uh, went on the wrong side of the roadway, went through the closure. Um, we had some officers assigned to that uh, Caltrans uh, team. Uh, they uh, initially put into a pursuit, uh, pursued the vehicle to this location uh, here at Lookout Trail, um, uh, where they uh, went through the canyons. Um, at one point, um, um, in an attempt to evade and flee, um, this particular individual, we believe, is a 26-year-old white male. Um, right now, we're trying to track him down. Um, uh, rammed our CHP vehicle uh, several times. Um, no injuries, fortunately, to any CHP or personnel. And uh, we have reason to believe that he may have left the area, but we are going to be continuing patrols in this area. What about the residents that live in this area? Are you telling them to stay inside, or are you giving any warning to them? Um, not at this time. We think that uh, we have a, a very strong um, uh, indication that he has left the area. Um, so that's the reason why we're scaling back, and we're just going to be patrolling the area just in case. But um, we have a very high, uh, there's a high probability that he has left the area. Okay, thank you so much, Officer Leland Tang. So again, what you're hearing is that suspect driving a white panel U-Haul van did not stop at that construction zone, rammed into that CHP vehicle, and was able to escape in the hills in this area. Anyone who's familiar with Topanga Canyon knows that this is a very hilly area. That suspect was able to flee. And as you just heard Officer Leland Tang say, he believes that this suspect did, in fact, leave the area. Back to you in the studio. Some spikes and stuff.
Someone let him know they're shooting my people. Hold on. in custody tonight. North Myrtle Beach Police Lieutenant Michael Swarthout said officers found the third person just after 9 tonight. And here are the three suspects. You got Rob, Roderick Berkley, Lance Hardiman, and Justin Presley. Berkley and Presley are both 25. They're both from Little River. Hardiman is 24 from Long. City spokesperson Pat Dowling says warrants on the three will likely be served tomorrow morning. The robbery happened late this morning at the South State Bank on Main Street. Police say the robbers then took off and started shooting as they drove off. Police say during the chase, the crook shot at ordinary citizens and at officers with what appeared to be assault rifles. News 13's Brennan McDavid is live now in North Myrtle Beach with more on today's robbery, chase, and captures. Brennan. Yeah, Bob and Megan, I'm on the road where their command post used to be, but you can see it's all emptied out. The search is over. I'm told officers searched 200 acres just about before finding the third and final suspects near Long Bay Road. No officers or civilians were injured. North Myrtle Beach Police, Horry County Police SLED, and the Sheriff's Office all helped out with the search. Here's a look at how the day began and the manhunt that followed. Just before 11 this morning, police got a call from South. South State Bank on Main Street. The dispatcher sent out a description of the getaway car with three men inside. Within minutes, an officer spotted the car and the chase began. Down Highway 17 and into a barefoot landing neighborhood, firing gunshots. Melvin Fields was in his car when he got caught in the middle of the pursuit. And I started hearing the pop pop coming around the corner because all my windows were down. And the next thing I know, I'm looking to my left at a high speed of chase. The car was going at a high speed and just firing at me, directly at me. Officers say the chase continued down Club Course Drive and onto Water Tower Road with the suspects still shooting out the window. Brian Mallard was in his garage at the time. And then they went behind the house, which is Water Tower Road, and I also had. I heard a couple shots. Little did he know that two of those shots hit his house. He went inside to find glass on the ground and a bullet hole through his back door. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was alarming and a little nerve wracking. Police used rumble strips to stop the car. Officers say the suspects got out and ran into the woods. They disappeared on me. They took a left towards uh, Star Bluff. They're going to be in this area somewhere. Let's set up a perimeter. After 10 hours of searching, police found and arrested the third suspect. Very relieved on a lot of different levels that all officers weren't hit, that, that uh, no civilians were injured, but also that we didn't potentially leave someone out there who could do further harm tonight. And that, that was really the driving force behind us staying out there and sticking with it and not giving up. And we 
And again, officers have three people in custody. We don't know the exact charges yet, but we're told warrants will be issued tomorrow. Reporting live in North Myrtle Beach, Brenda McDavid, News 13. We are getting a first look at some surveillance video after the sheriff's office says a driver led deputies on a chase before crashing into an Anderson County gas station. Happened just after 5 o'clock this morning, bright and early at the BP station on Anderson Drive in Williamston. Check it out. The owner of the gas station says the suspect crashed into a guardrail on the side of the BP and hit the ice cream machine. The surveillance video then shows the man who you see there run through the parking lot, tries to hide under a car before... As you can see, he just laid there and surrendered. We caught up with the clerk at the Saluda Quick Stop who witnessed all of this happen. There was blue lights and um, we heard a thud and car running and I seen a boy run from our ice maker around to the right side of the store. He didn't act like he was hurt. He was still trying to run, but he didn't go very far. So the man was taken into custody and the sheriff's office tells us charges are still being finalized. His name has not yet been released to us. Not four. Southbound, southbound here on it, Scotch. Okay. Can we get units south of here, please? Get on how to get traffic. He's weaving in and out of uh, his collision with with a member of the public. Speed is eight zero. Still here one M southbound in the roadworks. <laughs> yeah, medium risk. Just coming up to the new junction for Beedale and North Allerton. Yeah, he's had a collision with. Took his wing mirror off. It's continuing air one. The number two now and a wild ride. A suspect on the run leading police on a dangerous chase through several cities. Seven Action News reporter Aaron Baskerville is live in Detroit. Aaron, this whole thing was caught on video? Heather and Glenda, the whole thing caught on surveillance video. We actually got our hands on more surveillance video that we'll show you in a second. But two suspects are facing several charges tonight, including fleeing and eluding and retail fraud. The only thing that stopped that driver on Friday night was a brick wall. Just a crazy how he crashed, but he made it alive. Cell phone video shows the aftermath of a car slamming into a building on Schoolcraft on Detroit's west side. Minutes earlier, surveillance video obtained by 7 Action News captured the car hitting the building, the suspect casually running away before investigators arrive. That man is 20-year-old Joshua Legriere. Uh, they did not keep up with this subject because he was too reckless and we didn't ourselves want to cause another situation. It all started at a mire in Westland. The 20-year-old speeding away from officers, Legriere, along with 23-year-old Marquise Turner, who was caught at the mire and seen with a grin on his face in his mugshot, are accused of stealing liquor from stores in at least four different cities. This time around, $600 worth. I saw a basket of liquor inside of the police car just full of liquor and they said only one bottle was broken. That chase reached speeds of nearly 90 miles an hour, swerving through streets with heavy traffic in Westland, Garden City, Dearborn Heights, Inkster and Detroit. Legriere tried squeezing through two cars, causing a minor accident. Westland eased back for safety reasons, losing sight for a while. Then all of a sudden, other agencies on his tail flying down the intersection. Eventually, he would crash into that building in Detroit and get chased down. In Detroit, Aaron Baskerville, 7 Action News.
It's new dash cam video showing a high speed chase involving a high end car. Jones Creek police say the driver in this chase used to work at a local car dealership. And we say used to because he was fired just days before leading police on a chase in one of that dealership's cars. Our Fox Eyes Natalie Fultz has video of that chase and information on the man who police are searching for tonight. Take a look at this dash cam video from the June 16th incident. An officer tries to pull over the driver of this Mercedes for going over the speed limit when the driver decides he isn't going to stop. Why? You know, why were they running? Why? Why was it? Why was it worth driving at the speeds that you were driving at to try to get away from the police? It's a question Johns Creek police think they now have an answer to. The person that we were looking at did not have a driver's license. It's much easier to deal with that than to deal with the charges that you're looking at now, um, putting the public at risk, putting yourself at risk, and, you know, involving yourself in a high-speed chase. If you look closely, you'll notice something different about this car than other ones you typically see. Check out that test drive tag and the Mitsubishi emblem. That's what ultimately helped police track down the suspect, Frederick Spry. Um, investigators started looking, found the Mitsubishi dealerships that were close by, and began looking online at their inventory and actually found a picture of a vehicle for sale at the Roswell Mitsubishi that uh, perfectly matched. That led them to the dealership. One of their employees who is paid to drive vehicles between two of their locations had the vehicle signed out that day and was the one that was operating that vehicle when the officer attempted to stop him. Tuesday, police issued warrants for Spry's arrest. He definitely took what could have been something minor, could have been easily dealt with, and uh, really multiplied the problem. I spoke with Roswell Mitsubishi. They tell me that Spry is no longer an employee with their company. In Johns Creek, Natalie Fultz, Fox 5 News.
of the engine. They just ran Stacy. Get the door. Get the door.
him to get to get worked up with his surprises. <laughs> to go down for 10 or better, five or better at least, so y'all niggas enjoy this shit. Hey, we 
champions, nigga. This our champions celebrate, nigga. This our celebrated, nigga. Fuck it. I'm out. You feel me? This car's the last ride. Anybody that get to see this shit? Or kill one of the two. I got a whole half a tank of motherfucking. Oh, no, I don't need to go in. Baby, I love you. I know it don't seem like it. I can't explain why I just shit like this. But I love you, shit. I can't say nothing else. I'm sorry for everything, man. I'm sorry for everything. I'm sorry for everything. I'm sorry for everything. It's just in my blood and shit. I love you, though. You ever know. 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 You ever know.